Okay, guys, we are going to keep this one pretty quick today. Um, I've been meaning to test the electronic shutter uh, pre-release function on uh, the Fuji X-H2S. And over the weekend, I had a few tests. Um, none of them are perfect, but I think they are pretty indicative of how the camera does. So let's dig right into this. Okay, so first I was at this medieval uh, Renaissance combat festival and they had a Raptor display. So this is an American Kestrel. I was shooting in pretty harsh light, lots of people around. Um, so I hadn't quite figured out my settings and I was, in hindsight, I was too tight on the bird. Um, once, once she started moving, I didn't have much space to work with. But uh, ISO 1000 and 3200 shutter. So here I'm pre-released because they were sitting talking um, for, for quite a while. So I didn't know when the bird was gonna fly. But you can see as the bird starts to go into the motion, uh, it's all looking good through here. And then here you can see, here's where I wish I was wider because I lost it. Um, I would say overall the focus held pretty well. In hindsight, I think a zone would have been would have been better. I, I think you have to be realistic about what you want out of a mode like this. Um, I, in one of the tests, I even used manual focus. Um, I, you know, it's at some point it's going to lose the bird um, in most cases. But I think like if you're shooting a bird perched, you probably are trying to get uh, a motion like that. You know, you're not trying to, to get it once it's totally gone. So you can see here, like it's still focused on her hand, um, which is, is pretty much where it was. But overall, I'm pretty happy with that because I'm using the mode to actually try to capture the action. Um, and I wouldn't have been able to get that otherwise because it happened so fast that I would have missed it. You can see, I mean, these were all within within one second. If you look up here, you can see, you know, fractions of a second. So pretty good there. Um, so this was a Harris Hawk. And at this point, I actually did, I was, I was wider, which was good. But I tried to actually uh, track the bird. And you see a really dark bird against dark shadows. So, so again, not... Uh, I'm going to do more of this next month. I'll do another test. There's another uh, fair that's going to have some stuff like this. But same thing, like the initial movement, it does really well. You can see scrubbing through those. I think this one's I raised the shadows on. But you can see scrubbing through those, like it actually does a really good job of holding the bird as he's flying. So, I mean, this is like the kind of photo you probably are doing it for. Um, yeah, I've... I've raised the shadows a bit to bring his wings up here. But, you know, I feel like if you're if you're using this type of mode and you're probably doing it ideally with maybe a songbird or some other type of bird on a perch or something like that, or like a baseball player, you know, or a pitcher or something, something like that where you've got your framing nice. This is an ugly picture because of the frame. Um, but I would never be able to capture the, the bird outstretched like this, just trying to time it with the shutter. It'd be a nightmare. So the pre-release works really well. Now, I lost the bird. That's a cool one. I started to lose him right about here. Um, and then I completely lost him here. I was not set up to track. Um, I had a, a center... I had a center point over here, so I was not even following him well. Again, I was really close to the action, uh, so I was able to keep him in frame, but I, the camera wasn't set. I didn't have any special modes either. It was just normal tracking. Uh, it gets back onto him eventually, so here it finds him, but could have done that better. I mean, if I was planning to, to do that, I could have set the camera up a little different. This isn't really my kind of shooting, but you could do better than that, I think. Um, Okay, this these are backwards. Oh, no, they're not. Okay. Uh, this one, I didn't click it at the right time, and you can see I was at 150th. I was doing, um, I was doing some, some sunset right now. It's just after 7, so I was shooting pretty low light um, on this green heron fishing. So these are all going to be motion blurry for sure, but you can see the camera had it. Um, I didn't press the shutter. I was kind of late on it this time, but it got the strike. That one's soft. But overall, I mean, it still had them pretty well in the motion. This one's better, uh, much noisier, higher shutter speed.
but you can see as we scrub through, you're getting all of that action. And I mean, again, for the image quality, we're kind of far away, ISO 8000, but I mean, the focus is doing a good job. If you're not cropping in and you clean this up and treat those, and I mean, one 1000 is too slow to capture action that fast for sure as well. So overall, I'm pretty happy with the setting. I learned, that's not who I'm looking for. I learned a lesson though, and today I did a test. Um, and what were we shooting? Um, this duck. And I was trying some different settings. So here we're at 1250, and I think we get a little shake. And same thing, I wasn't like prepared for this at all. But scrubbing through that, you get it really nice Really nice wing movement, and it's nice, you know, on a, again, wasn't quite fast enough. But overall, there's some moments. There's better detail there. It's getting really overcast today. But, I mean, this isn't a mode you're using for, like, pixel peeping sharpness. And, again, it, it's funny. I do some of these tests to show, like, action photography. And I get a lot of trolls talking about sharp pictures. Um, I'm going to link my Flickr below. Um, if you want to see sharp pictures, um, you're welcome to go to my Flickr. I know how to sh take sharp photos. Um, you know, these, these are not meant to be sharpness tests. Um, okay. Here's – we have two more. So, another one with a duck. I like this. This is kind of neat. Again, I, like next time I do this, I would do it maybe, I mean, ideally better light so I don't have to crank the ISO. A faster lens would be nice too. The F8 is, you know, in super fast action like this where you're starting to want like shutters up at like 1, 3,000 or something like that. You're going to miss. But I, I mean, I don't hate that. That's not unusably soft, especially at uh, at this this range, right? I mean, if you if you just treat this for a second here. I was pretty crooked. Just oh, that's still crooked. What am I doing? What am I doing? Oh, that's still crooked. Forget it. Let's just no noise it. And why not? I would normally mask sharpening and just mask the bird, but add a. Uh, Add a little curve filter. And let's just try to fix this. Oh, well, I can't I can't get this straight. That's almost there to what I want. I mean, I'm quite happy with that. Maybe bring down the shadows a bit. And maybe push the highlights a bit. Push the exposure just a bit. And why not? Let's even add like a little vignette. Just bring down the size. And I think that's a pretty nice little action shot. So, I mean, it, it's not razor sharp. At 100% magnification, it might even be a bit soft. But still, it's a cool shot, and you could definitely do better with your settings. So, what else do we have? A couple more. Actually, that's a cool one there. I might have to work work with this one later and see see what we get. Um, okay. And this is the last one. Um, I cranked my ISO is high here, 12,800. Uh, but I cranked our shutter to 3,200. We had this Kingfisher very far. We get the poop action shot here. But this is what I wanted. I wanted the dive. And if you've ever shot Kingfishers, you know how fast they are and hard to capture. Again, this is very far, uh, bad light, but the camera held really well. Now this, I actually used manual focus because I knew that he was going to be moving and I knew that roughly my focus would make sense here anyway. Um, so I thought, you know, why use, that's the thing. I think for people ragging on cameras, autofocus systems, you have to ask yourself if you're trying to buy a computer or a tool because manual focus is 
something that makes a lot of sense in a lot of disciplines of photography some landscape photography a lot of astro and some wildlife if you're shooting something that's tricky and you can dial in if you know where the subject's going to be why would you ask the autofocus to do it when you can just manually do it yourself um, so in this case actually you know what i don't even know if i used manual focus i might have used single point with no tracking and just focused and then stopped focusing as i held the shutter and that's what back button allows you to do that's a pretty cool little move so i mean the image quality is not good because of my settings my iso is super high and he's far but at this range if i had a cleaner background and i could actually see the bird a little bit better cleans up the noise pretty well i mean i'm that image quality is fine um and these, I mean, Kingfishers are tough. This is this is the most action shotty I've got. So I would say overall, I really like the mode. I've got it quick mapped to a button so I can turn it on and off. And if I think I've got a subject on a perch, I'll take a couple of uh, sharp portraits and then uh, I'll turn it off if I, or I'll turn it on if I think the subject's gonna dive off the perch and do something cool. And then I can take a, take a go at trying to capture it. So that is the electronic shutter uh, pre-release mode and it works really well.